Hi, everybody. I'm Mr. Hayes. This is Mr. Hayes' World of Math. Welcome back. We are doing AP exam review for AP Stats. Um, we are going through Chapter 7 in our book, but probably more important for you if you're joining us on YouTube. Um, we're talking about sampling distributions, and we're going to look at free response questions from that. Now, all of this can be found down below. There's a link. I just realized I had never really shown any of you what it looks like. It looks like this. As you can see, I have everything laid out. I've got some areas for Khan Academy over here if you want to do that. I use that as preview heading into the day. So my students today would have looked through the sampling distributions, quizzes. And again, I'm not doing it for necessarily correctness. It's just to refresh their memory so then when we get into the free response questions, which look like this, we're ready to rock and roll. All right. So with that being said, we're going to jump right in. Oh, and by the way, while you're down there looking at the amazement of what this is, he said sarcastically, throw a like, subscribe, comment, any of that type of stuff. And hopefully if you're finding it works, that's great. If there's something else that would be helpful, let me know that too. So um, as I said, we're going to be doing sampling distributions. The, um, a lot of this has been kind of roped into some of the other questions, um, more about confidence intervals and testing. Um, prior to potentially last year, the questions came from like 2014 and 2010. So it's not a super common type of thing. But again, all the concepts are going to be stuff that you're going to use. So in this case here, schools in a certain state receive funding based upon the number of, of students who attend school. So to determine the number of students who attend school, one day is selected at random and the number of absences counted, or the student attendance is counted. And the daily number of absences at high school A is approximately normally distributed with 120 students absent and a high, uh, standard deviation of 10.5. Now in the back of your head, you should be thinking standard deviation, mean, okay, probably gonna do something with z-scores here. Um, so let's see what question A brings us. If more than 140 students are absent on a day that the attendance is counted for funding purposes, the high school will lose some of its state funding for the subsequent year. Approximately, what's the probability of high school A will lose some of its state funding? So notice here, I've got the normal curve because they said it is approximately normally distributed. That is important. Let me get out my highlighter, which is even more important. Um, now, again, you can't use highlighters on the test. However, you can use blue and black pens. So I, I give my students blue pens so that they're writing in pencil and they're high and highlighting information in pen. Um, so mean of 120 and standard deviation of 10.5 students. So when you go through and do that, we want higher than 140. So my z-score is going to be x minus x bar over standard error, standard deviation, 140 minus 120. That looks like a plus, I'm sorry, over 110. And you get a z-score of 1.905. Now, when you type that in, you can either use table A. And if you do that, indicate it up there in your word. And then the second thing, too, is just realized I couldn't see my preview. Um, then make sure if you're going to end up using your computer or your calculator for it, normal CDF, and then write out what you're using. So lower, upper value, lower value, upper value, mean, and standard deviation. So I've got 1.905, 10 to the 99th, 0, 1, and I get a probability of 0 0.0287. Now the important thing here is, is that you always, and if you hit been watching this now, watching any of the previous six videos, I'm very big on saying answer the question that's being asked. So here is what's the probability a high school A will lose some of its funding, okay? So you need to at least tie it into this. You can't just leave it as 0 0.0287, okay? Some sort of summary statement, the probability that X, which is the number of school days, is bigger than or equal to 140 is going to be 0 0.0287. You could also write it out in a sentence if you wanted to. That would be fine. Um, but that would be adequate for what we have. Okay. So now for question part B down here, the Principals Association in the state suggests that instead of choosing just one day, what happens if we choose three days and take an average? Great. So with the suggested plan, high school A would lose some of its state funding in the subsequent year if the mean of the um, number of high school students for three days is greater than 140. So again, things you should be thinking about, normal distribution, what happens with distributions when sample size gets larger? It starts to get, you know, it starts to tighten up, right? Why? Because your standard deviation is getting smaller. So again, things that hopefully you're going through your head as you're reading problems, even before you see what the question is supposed to be asking. So would the high school A be more likely, less likely, or equally likely to lose funding using the suggested plan compared to what we did back up in part A. So again, ask yourself this, what's going to change if we do a three-day average? 
Is my 140 going to change? No. Is my 120 going to change? No. So what else is left? Is the standard deviation going to change? There you go. Because remember what ends up happening, and I think I have it written down here. Your standard, error, standard deviation is going to go from 10.5 to 10.5 divided by the square root of 3. And so that's going to tighten up that curve. Because remember, the larger the sample size, the, it's steep. I'm doing this a lot. The normal curve gets tighter. So you know the standard deviation goes down. So because of that, and you, could you calculate it out? Probably. Do you need to? No. What you have to say is that high school A would be less likely to lose funding. Why? Because the increase in sample size would reduce the standard deviation. And it would also then, and therefore, increase the z-score. Okay? And because of that, then, the probability will go down. All right? So again, depending upon how you want to play it, if you calculate it out, if I remember the rubric correctly, they do give you credit for that. They're saying, well, I calculated it out and go from there. The key here is right this step right there. Okay? Um, don't forget about it. And again, and part of it is, is that you, we've been doing z-scores so long, this was when we kind of really introduced playing with z-scores and what would work. This is the part that if you're going to forget about it, it's going to be that. Okay, so just don't get too excited. Or at the very least, when you do stuff like this, look through your formula sheet on the AP exam and say, oh, yeah, what's that one with the square root of n? Maybe I should use that. Um, so down here, typical high school week consists of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The principal at high school A believes the number of student absences tend to be greater on Mondays and Fridays. And so they are concerned that... Um, if one school day is random from the typical three day, three typical school weeks, what's the probability that all those days are going to be chosen are going to be Monday and Friday? Oh, actually, I did that. What's the probability that none of those days um, are going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? In other words, what's the probability that they're going to be Monday or Friday? So, what's the probability? And you can play this a couple different ways. What's the probability that you're going to pick a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Oh, three out of five. What's the probability of picking a Monday or a Tuesday or Monday or a Friday? Two out of five. So, however you want to do it, you can do it. So we want to have what's the probability that you only get Mondays and Fridays. And that's the way I'm going to play it because otherwise, you, you know, it's just, I, I don't know, it's just the way that I think. Um, so what I'm going to do down here is the probability of a Monday or a Friday is 2 out of 5. You could write this as 2 out of 5 to the third power. I'm writing it out like this just to make sure that if you get stuck, you can kind of reason your way out of it. The first week, I would have a two out of five chance of getting it there. And they were independent because obviously what day they pick is not going to choose. The, we're assuming it's independent because they aren't saying that they're going to pick three different days. So two out of five, week number two, two out of five, week number three, two out of five. So you're going to multiply all that out. You get eight out of 125. So you get about 6.4%. Again, go back to saying what's the problem. So what are we asking? You can't just leave it as 0.064. This work over here. Stats teachers would know what it is, but it's not adequate to answer the question. So please make sure that you go through. Sorry, just checking time. Um, and say something like the probability that there's, there's no Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Thursdays chosen is 0.064. Okay. Um, let's jump to the next one. The next one, I believe, comes from 2010. Question number two. So local radio station plays. 40 rock and roll songs during each four-hour show. Program director knows needs to know the total amount of air times for the 40 songs. Um, the, distribution lengths, the distribution of the lengths of rock and roll songs in minutes is roughly symmetric with means of 3.9 and a standard deviation of 1.1. So describe the sampling distribution sample of the sample means song lengths of for random samples of 40 rock and roll songs. So again, when you start thinking about describing, my class jumped out, oh, SOCKS sucks. So let's do it. SOCS, I'm sorry. Now, we don't have to worry about the O because we're, since we don't have individual pieces of data, we're not sure about outliers. But we do have to worry about shape. So what's the shape of this? Now, they say it's roughly symmetric, but there's a whole bunch of different shapes that are symmetric. Can we call that normal? In this case, we can. Why? Because due to central limit theorem, 40 is bigger than 30. So therefore, it, we can assume that it looks normal. And yes, you do have to say that. It's not just good enough to say it's a normal distribution. Um, it's centered about at 3.94, and your standard deviation. Now, again, a lot of people, it's really a standard deviation is 1.1. Now, remember, that's the standard deviation for each song. We have 40 songs, so you do have to go through and divide it through by square root of 40. 
And so that would look like this. 1.1 over square root of 40 gives us the 0.174 that we were asking for, or that we listed over there. Okay. So then they go on and say if the program manager schedules 80 minutes of news and advertisements in a four hour block, which is 100, or 240 minutes, that means you only have 160 minutes left for music. Approximately, what is the probability that the total amount of time to play 40 randomly selected rock and roll songs exceeds the time available? Now, some people were thinking, oh, let's multiply it out. What's 3.9 times 40? Work it backwards, okay? My average song is 3.9 songs. How much? How much would the average? How much is the average time that you have per song in 160 minutes for 40 songs? Oh, that, Mr. Hayes, would be 160 divided by 40 or 40, correct. And so you'd end up with this. So you would say, okay, 3.9 is normal. I've got my 4.0 over here. I want to go, what's the chances of being larger than that? Great. Now I have my answer there. How did we come up with it? Again, it's going to come back to that z-score idea. So we're going to come back down over here. So your z-score is going to be x minus x bar. So we got 4.0 minus the 3.9 divided by the standard deviation that we found up in part A. And we get a z-score of 0.575. Down over here, normal CDF or table A. Blah, 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 blah. And again, we want greater than that. So when we type all that out, we get a probability of 0.283. And then for the answer, now again, right here, what are they asking? What is the probability that the total amount of time needed is going to be bigger than 40, uh, is going to exceed the time available? They're not asking us for a solution, et cetera, et cetera. They're just saying, what's the probability? The probability that X bar, our average, is going to be higher than 4.0 minutes is going to be 0.283. Done. All right. I think that's it for that problem. So that means it's going to be it for this question. Now, again, I do put extra problems in here. So like here, here's the one from 2009. All of that stuff is linked in the document I showed you before. The link again to that is down below. Comment, like, subscribe. We're going to come back with chapter eight tomorrow when we start talking about confidence intervals. And then we're going to take a break so we can do the, my classes are going to do the testing for that. Um, for chapters five through eight, and then we'll pick back up with the last four little or four little topics um, on the other side of that. So, if you have any qu um, questions, talk to your teacher, talk to me. Otherwise, we will see you later. Bye.